turnaround Tuesday, election day. Heard there was some vaccine breakthrough. We thought the market was up because it was assuming a Biden victory with the market, uh, the dollar getting slammed. <clears throat> nice call, uh, Pauly, on a weak dollar. Okay, so a couple of trades. I think it could be short. Uh, U.S. dollar yen, no one wants to trade it for one more breakdown here. And I'm, I took a shot in silver here today. Right there at the moving average, you actually have seven cents made. Eight. I'm going to take it, take it, and take a piece off here. Okay. And so the market's acting like uh, a Biden victory. This is a board that Pauly called. I mean, green everywhere. Uh, we're approaching resistance here in S and P's. Okay, so oil, pretty good recovery, but we're at the 50% level. So I think you you have a myriad of instruments to fade. I, I would just day trade it, you know. That's all I'm looking for is maybe just a day trade. Uh, I don't think I'm going to carry it into tonight. I may, you know, once the polls start reporting, come back in and, and do something about, you know, what's going on here. And, you know, this Dixie, it's got to hold this uh, 93.20. You know, we could still get another move in the dollar. I think you fade the board. Okay. So, uh, except maybe the dollar. Uh, I, sh I, I showed this three drive yesterday in cable and we have a trend break. So cable looking good. This I'm not surprised about. Okay, so maybe it's going to set up one more low coming in euro pound around 89 and a half or so. And as you can see in S&Ps, we went right there to this uh, uh, prior resistance, I think between here uh, and 3380. This is going to be kind of like do or die. But let me tell you something, guys. Uh, if you wanted to ask me what to do besides scalping and day trading, I would tell you to do nothing, okay? Um, why not wait for the dust to settle, all right? And Or at least wait until, you know, uh, we have an idea. I still think it's going to be contested. So, you know, I don't think the market's going to like uh, this being contested at all. So. Um, that's what I see here. And, uh, yeah, everything. So weak dollar, I can't chase a weak dollar here. Congratulations. Nice trade. So we'll see what happens here. Gold is at resistance. Uh, you have some moving averages right here. So, uh, you know. I'm I'm interested in what the team is thinking here with this green board, and um, I'm going to stick with uh, my choice for turnaround Tuesday. Could be all wet, but I'm trying silver here. So we'll see what happens. Risk in thirty cents, and short yen looking for one more shot down. To 104 to clean out all the stops for a third drive. Okay, we'll see if that happens too. And that's enough for me to, uh, for scalping for the day. I don't think I'm going to carry it into um, when we start getting results from the polls. I want to wish everyone good luck. I also uh, am hoping that uh, America uh, does not turn to violence because of this election. I mean, they're boarding up the whole country. Every city is uh, preparing for unrest. So uh, my prayer is for peace and uh, hope that our better angels uh, really take control instead of our anger and resentment and hatred. Uh, so with that being said, 
Yeah, they won't. They won't, DJ. Anyway, Blake, uh, what do you think? Uh, turn, you know, green screen, um, dollar really under pressure. Um, you know, I think the market's um, really just starting to price in more of a, a blue wave. And, and okay, that's, um, someone that's, told me it was a vaccine. Thought it was more of, of the vaccine. No, uh, I think it's just more it. of a blue wave being priced in right now. But uh, as as you worry, uh, unless it's a complete blowout, like, I mean, it's got to be like a landslide victory by Biden. I, I'm with you. I I think that it's going to be contested. He's already laid out the groundwork for yeah. us, so it's like. I, I ha, I'm fearful that he's going to uh, if, if and this is I, I still I actually still believe he's going to win. But that's just that's my point of view. But um, but, you know, if it's even remotely close, especially in some of these, um, you know, you got North Carolina, which I don't think. And, I, and I, let me here. Let me let me pull this up really quick. Um, okay, I'm going to show you guys something. So this is. Um, this is in the New York times and this is a good, uh, little, uh, um, oh. yeah, it's a little schematic of like, okay, here's, here's the state and here's the yeah. ones that are, you know, here's when voting might be tabulated by the end, you know, by, by, you know, that day or a couple of days from, from, from there then or whatever, right. we may actually know a couple of the key states overnight or I say overnight, I should say today, tonight, um, Florida is going to be one. It's going to yeah. be, you know, there's, there's going to be a lot of votes that still need to be uh, counted, but we might have a decent indication. And here's the thing. And, and I have to, you know, my thoughts really about Florida are, are pretty simple. You know, if Trump loses Florida, it's going to be really tough for him to win. If Biden loses Florida, he can still win. It's just going to be a little bit more, you know, he's got a lot of other things to do. He's got a lot of other states he's got to win. Um, Georgia is one of those key battleground states. Uh, Texas is, you know, I, I, I think Texas stays red. But if for some reason, if for some reason Tr Trump loses Texas, I mean, it's it's almost over because the elect electoral college. Right. So, I mean, there. You know, Arizona is one of those battleground states. Um, uh, North Carolina, the, this is the one um, that I think one of the ones that we have to um, watch because, you know, 97% of the ballots cast will be reported on election night. So that's pretty good. I think Ohio is going to it's going to be red. Um, yeah, like Texas is up up, up there, you know, so. You're going to be what we're going to be doing uh, is looking for like a combination of states, you know, uh, and I think that's going to be pretty important and pretty important going into tonight. But people are pricing in a blue wave. And right now, if we get a blue wave, um, you know, you got the dollar that's weak. You've got stocks that are, you know, recovering. I still think that the stock market actually has further to go, but I'm not thinking that we're going you know, too far, especially with the blue wave. Let's, let's talk about that for a moment. And then I'm going to get into the charts. Um, you know, Blake, I, 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 uh, won, ahead. I won in Florida in 1974 when I was bailed out in Fort Lauderdale for disorderly conduct. Say what? When I was bailed out in Fort Lauderdale for disorderly conduct in 1974, I won in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, and my friends got arrested for sleeping on Daytona Beach where the trucks were, you know, running up and down the sand. You shouldn't sleep on the beach in Daytona. You could get run over. Oh, wow. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They, yeah wow. Could... <laughs> did, did you get hauled in for disorderly conduct? Uh, yeah. In Lauderdale. Yeah. And that's that those are the days dale well oh god uh, I, I it's a miracle i'm here talking to you guys today so anyway <laughs> <laughs> just brought back winning florida brought back that memory okay nice um <laughs> when but when you're when you're talking about uh like the the election and you're talking about like a possible blue wave the thing the thing that you guys have to think about is that taxes are probably going to go higher 
substantially and there's a lot of you know there whether it's whether it's corporate taxes or estate taxes I mean, taxes are going to go higher so i think that the s p upside would be very limited and that's why if we get a rally to like 3500 in the s p I, I think you got to sell that sell that rally on a blue wave and i'm, I'm just talking about that in, oh, in general yeah um and and really the the I, i'm trying to think about all those scenarios that i really want to be selling risk and really the only reason why i'd want to sell risk is that the election is contested uh, or there you know it's a uh, buy the rumor sell the news on a blue wave because i think the market's been pricing in that um but i do think if the mar if if we do get a, a contested election the market will move lower until we resolve this so and, and that could be days or weeks from now so um and that's that's why tonight I'm going to say, as I've been saying to you guys already, but I'm going to say it again, whatever you do tonight, don't get super comfortable. Like, yeah. you, you know, we could, we could be in a situation where, um, uh, oh, and then I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another piece of information. I'm going to be watching Fox uh, news. Um, one of the reasons why is Fox, their, um, their analysis team is they're uh, unbiased fair and unbiased no they like they, they, <laughs> they don't call they don't they they they've never called a state wrong i think oh, wow. um in, in 40 40 years i think is what i heard um but they're really they're they're and it's it's important to be you know going in between um uh uh stations and even if you're like well i can't listen to fox i don't want to listen to fox watch their tweets watch if they call a state that's that's usually a, a pretty solid indication that they won that state so or whoever won that state so i'll be i'll be i, I won't necessarily be listening to fox per se i'll be listening to all the stations i'll be flipping back and forth but i'll be watching the fox like twitter feeds for you know if if they declare a state one but even if even if a state is one, and I'm saying, and, and it doesn't matter if it's a Trump or a Biden state, if you make decisions based on what's happening with each individual state, what I'm trying to say is don't get too comfortable because especially if it's a Biden win, because if it is a Biden win, like let's say Biden takes Florida, but it's a pretty close margin. There's a really good chance that Trump's going to contest that. So, uh, you know, voter fraud, whatever the yeah. case may be, um, you know, it, it, that that's that's why I'm like, OK, if you get into a trade, try to get profitable, move your stops up to break even as quickly as possible, maybe take some off. And then, yeah, if you get lucky, you know, boom, it continues. Great. But if it reverses on you, you just don't, you know, just try to get in that and in, in that relatively profitable position quickly and then yeah partials are everything in this environment aren't they yeah they will be in in today i think uh tonight i think so all right well what i want to do is i want to go through as i normally do is i'm going to go through the bias chart and for those of you that might be new to listening in at the moment i i, I go over this bias chart and i go through all the major currencies and the indices and look at the key support and resistance levels and kind of map that out for you based on you know the the technicals that we see here but let's start with the euro um so with the euro we, we've seen a bounce overnight uh, and it doesn't really surprise me actually let me go to the dollar index really quick if if you're watching the dollar index here and you know if you're a forex analytics subscriber just give you an example last night last night's analysis here's the chart right wow you know, a daily triangle may be developing with resistance at the 94 and a quarter level and support overnight at the 9335 level. Nailed both yeah. levels. Well, we we were we had already formed that resistance, but yeah. that is that shouldn't have been broken. And and this is very similar to um, you know, the SP. It's we're, we're forming a we're we're consolidating here, right? Yeah. So I, I think that you know, support, you're gonna find support down here. Um, you know, 9335 is this, this spike low here, but you can see there's a 50% retracement. Yeah. That's probably going to be decent support today, you know? All right. 
Excuse me. I'll write that down, 93.35. And then below that, just in case, uh, just in case we go further than that, is going to be 92, probably 92.70. Just in case, you know, the dollar gets absolutely smashed. Um, and let's see, I'm going to just write this down, 93.35, 94.25. Okay, 94 and a quarter is pretty stiff resistance. Um, the reason why I point that out is because I'm looking at the Euro and the Euro's bounce back and here's the 38% retracement. Okay. And there's a, also a spike low 38% retracement comes in at 117.20. We can get above that. We might squeeze even a little further. Okay. Like maybe, maybe, you know, 117.75, but I'm going to write down 117.20. The reason why I point that out is that um, if you saw the dollar index and you knew the dollar index was up against its resistance, then you, you know you wouldn't have been chasing the euro dollar short down here. I was I was wondering yesterday afternoon if we we're going to break this one sixteen yesterday morning. I'm sorry, and really kind of push below that support and try to trigger some stops, but. It, it, it didn't. And that's when I had to go flip over to the dollar index and say, oh, OK, we're knocking our head up against, you know, what looks like to be symmetrical resistance. So um, oh. support. So support is going to be critical right here at 116.10. It just is. You know, if the euro breaks through 116.10, then we are going back down to 115. In my in my opinion. OK, I put an asterisk there because I think it's important support. Uh, cable. So, you know, the pounds bounced. Uh, we had, we'd held the 618 retracement multiple times. Uh, and yesterday, you know, again, this is the analysis overnight. Once again, the support held at, at the 2866 618 retracement, which has been key for the bulls to, uh, to hold the last couple of weeks. Resistance is at 130. Well, we're at 130 right now. Yeah. We're knocking our head up against resistance. Now, a break above, I would say 130 and a quarter would open the door for our higher levels. So let's write down 130.20 as resistance today. Okay. Support, I think now dips back to 129.50 should find support today. Uh, uh, just so you guys know, the cable's off limits for me right now until until we get a better idea of what's happening with Brexit or there's some Brexit news. Yeah. I'm just kind of leaving the pound alone. But that's that's me. I mean, that's just how I'm approaching it. I'm, I'm not getting caught in the crossfire. So the Aussie, we had that false breakdown below 70. The RBA met, met last night. And um, it, again, I'm going to go reference back to the Aussie dollar. Overnight analysis. Now, let's let's talk about this for a second, okay? Because tonight we have an election. It's in Asia, a Asia tonight. If you guys haven't taken a trial of Forex analytics, this is the time to do it. It's one dollar. So this way you can be in the chat room, and this is our chat room today. Just to give you an example, this is. I'm going to go back to where I came in this morning. This is two hours ago. Still going, still going. Okay. Yeah, that still way going. they could be there for, you know, to interact with the, the whole community for a buck for, you know, this thing could stretch out more than the 10 day trial, but at least it'll. Yeah, at least you got people to yeah. talk to that are currency yeah. traders and trade the markets. I mean, we don't we we there will be political talk uh, tonight, um, obviously, uh, but we don't try to voice our opinions. We just you know obviously we'll be talking politics. We we actually try to keep politics out of this chat room, um, you know, like our opinions. Um, and and every once in a while somebody 
blurts out something that they can't help. But, you know, for the most part, we keep our opinions out of here. But we will be talking politics like oh, because uh, it's it's obviously influencing the market today. You know, non non opinions. But, hey, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about what if this happens? What if that happens? But if you want to be in a chat room, you can this is I'm just showing you from the time I got up this morning. Whoops, that's still going. Sorry. Uh, I got up. I guess I got up around here. Yeah, I mean, this is when I got into the chat room somewhere in this neighborhood. But look, I'm just going to scroll through. This is all the chatting that for the last two hours. And yeah, we might be uh, kind of messing around a little bit this morning because it's, uh, you know, the markets are kind of, uh, usually there's a lot of charts here. You guys are on Jumbotron. You guys can say hello, those of you that are listening in. But this is a perfect time to take advantage of being a Forex Analytics subscriber just for a dollar. So this way you at least have a place to be for the next 10 days. So that that is something I wanted to point out. <laughs> Thanks, Amir. Uh, yeah, never, ever, ever. Anyway, and hey Jeff, and hey Stelios, and uh, there, and and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put this back, okay. But uh, like I'm giving an example of overnight in the Aussie dollar end of day analysis ahead of the RBA, the Aussie dollar bounced from the 70 cent level once again. The RBA may do QE tonight, which may put some downside pressure on the pair. But when central banks have supported economies following COVID, we've seen currency supported as well. So Aussie downside should be limited, and we bounced, you know. We held downside limited overnight, bounced. Now here we are at resistance. So the Aussie facing very key resistance now. And I'm going to say that above 7160 is going to be bullish. But that's pretty key resistance, as is key support is at 70 cents. By the way, um, the Aussie dollar on a on a on a decisive Trump win. I think the Aussie dollar. I, I'm going to start selling it. Just so you guys know, um, the reason why is I I do believe that Trump is going to go after China again um, as we go into phase two, and he's going to be relentless. Um, I, I, I and that's going to weigh on the Aussie growth prospects. All right, so just. I'll probably be selling Aussie somehow, some way. I'm, you know, obviously watching. I'm not just going to be blindly selling it, but that is a pair that I will be focused on a short if, if Trump gets reelected. Okay, just FYI. All right, uh, Kiwi. So the Kiwi bounced in sympathy, but uh, you know, you can see that the 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 um, Kiwi still has really key resistance up at the. What, I, what, I, what is the, the shoulder of the head and shoulder pattern? But that doesn't mean that this head and shoulder pattern is going to play out. You know, risk, app, risk on, um, you know, we could very easily break through the 67.25 level, which is key resistance moving forward. So now support is going to be at 66 cents because this is the trend line support. Well, it's actually going to be a little lower than that, but 65.90, I'll write down for tonight. Dollar Canadians trading heavy. It was trading heavy yesterday. I tried to buy it yesterday. When we dropped through this support, I thought we would be supported here at 122 you know, the 50, 122, 50, 60 level. Um, and it just kept falling. You know, I, I got out of it and, you know, took a little stinker there uh, as this little head and shoulder pattern played out. But man, this thing's been trading really heavy. A lot of that has to do with crude oil. Crude was down 6% yesterday at one point, up 3% by the end of the day. That's a nearly 10% swing intraday in crude. So that's weighed on the dollar Canadian, obviously risk appetite. I do think we're going to find some support down here around the 131. Trend line support comes in at 131. So. Okay. Uh, resistance. 
Today, resistance is gonna be these highs, the overnight highs, you can see the spikes right up here. It'd be 132.30. You guys know that we're, notice we're in range on everything. That's just because the market is really range bound as we're uh, 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 you know waiting on this election. Uh, so the US dollar Mexican peso uh, slipped below um, support today. Uh, you know, if again, if you if you use Forex analytics, you know, you knew that support was going to be at 2110. The last update is valid for resistance, but support is strong at the 2110 level near term. And, you know, 2110, we bounced, we made, you know, one more plunge lower and then, you know, but you can see where we're supporting. We're being supported right around here. And the 618 retracement comes in at 2109. Um, and you can see right through here, this is all support for the dollar max. You know, yes, we, we went a little bit past it, but the, the dollar max in peso is not as liquid as other currencies. So we you tend to push through some supporter resistance levels a little bit before we stabilize. That's a perfect example of it. So I, I, I'm going to write down support today of 21 because you can't rule out a move to 21 at this point. But 21 is support, 21.55 is resistance, and that's key. If we break that, um, we should squeeze. Because you can see all this resistance right here. If for some reason we get through that, that's a 38% retracement, it, it will squeeze higher. Uh, on a Trump win, this is uh, this is another one I focus on the short side. On the it'll be on the Mexican peso. Um, all right, let's go to the Swissy. Swissy rejected ninety two cents. I think we wrote that down yesterday. Support being ninety one and a quarter, but I'm going to give it all the way back down to ninety one. Hey, uh, do you guys remember what yesterday's? Uh, let's see. What is yesterday's? Let me go to the file list here. Uh, bias chart from yesterday. Stelios put put it up November second. Thank you, Stelios. Re You're welcome. Resist resistance at ninety two. This is yesterday, right? This is ninety two, ninety one and a quarter. So yeah, same. And what a rejection, huh? 92. That, I mean, that was rejected. Just yeah. Nice. 91 and a quarter coming up, but I'm going to give it all the way down to 91 cents today. Dollar yen. So dollar yen still 105, 104. And I'm not touching it. I still think that there's a risk of 105 breaking, but that's me. Just leaving that alone for now. US dollar Norwegian Krona. This was our chart of the day yesterday. Um, I picked this out because of the 200 day moving average. We can see all the resistance up here uh, on the US dollar Norwegian Krona. I do think that um, this dip should be supported. Uh, we might see a dip down to the 618 retracement, which would be 931. So I'm going to write that down. And resistance is at 960, and that is critical. If we break that, we instantly turn bullish. Instantly. Just FYI. Gold. Come on, guys. Um, gold, where are we? Okay, here it is. So gold just broke this trend line and the 618 retracement. That should allow for a move in gold back up towards 1930. So that's our next level resistance. 
I don't want to put bullish yet, but but the fact that we broke that trend line and um, I, I actually sent out an alert, you know, to Forex Analytics subscribers this morning uh, or an update with the with gold and saying, hey, if gold breaks 1903, that's bullish. Um, you know, once we cleared 1903, you know, this is the 618 retracement. You can see how it's spiking. It's starting to, it's starting to squeeze some shorts now. Um, support, uh, I think this is kind of intraday, but that's an hourly support now is right here, in my opinion, 1885, that's support. As long as we're above that, um, you know, I don't think you should be bearish but if for some reason we we drop back below that that's where it changes okay s p last but not least so obviously 3250 that we talked about yesterday held um now i think dips back down to 3280 should be well supported and resistance the 50% retracement is at night as 33.94. We are stalling at the 38% retracement at 33.56. That is the, the, the highest 33.58. So that is the 38% retracement. I still think we can actually make it to 3,400. We might be able to do that, you know, ahead of the election tonight or the results tonight. So if, you know, I think 33 or 3,400 is the is the next level resistance. Let's say that we make it past that because we start pricing in a blue, you know, this blue wave and the market gets pretty bullish. Um, 34.85 is a 78% retracement. It's pretty close to triangle resistance. And, you know, I may be off on this trend line. This trend line might be something more like this, you know, by the time it's all said and done. So I'm going to write down 3485, just in case we start getting a little spike higher, which could happen, you know, and then I have to write this down. 3200 is critical support for the S&P. And if you guys don't know why, because it's right here. So if for some reason we break this support, uh, actually it's 32, it's 3210, I'm sorry. Let me just write that, let me be more, granular in my analysis okay so 3210 we break through that and then you know we're, we're probably heading a lot lower those are i think decent levels to look at just for tonight um just in case things get a little carried away so your bias chart is done here you go guys um i want to say thank you all so much for listening in today and um like i said today's a perfect time to be part of the Forex analytics community. It's only a dollar to do so. And then you can be in the chat rooms with us for at least the next 10 days. And hopefully you just love the community and you want to hang out uh, because it doesn't matter if you're using the light. Well, you, the, the premium version is where you get in the chat rooms, but even if you're using the light version, you get to try out the premium version right now. So, um, so anyway, thanks everybody for listening and good luck tonight. Uh, for those of you that are subscribers, I'll see you in four hours on the daily roundup webinar. We'll revisit some of these levels, kind of revisit where we are in the election process. I also to told you yesterday, the daily roundup webinar was gonna be a little bit longer today um, because of obviously an election night tonight. So you guys have a great one. Um, Steve, Stelios, Dale, it is all yours. And- um, Thank you, Blake. You know, thanks everybody. Good luck. Thank you, Blake. Thanks. Thank you, mate. Good luck, America. <laughs> America. Yeah, it, you know what? I, you know, and I, I have to admit that um, that yeah, it, it, just what Dale said. You know, I'm 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 worried about like the social unrest aspect of it. So if you are in the United States, please, you know, take care. Don't go out if you don't have to. I mean, you know, even all of our uh, all of our um, uh, soccer practices have been canceled today. It's it's great. I think I think it's more of the um, all all of our uh, all of our um, uh, coaches are European, so they probably are more interested in watching the 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 uh, the, the election rather than um, um, 
you know, uh, doing practice. But anyway, <laughs> that's <laughs> it's it's one of those things that I think that if you don't have to be out and about, don't do it. And um, you know, like Dale said. You know, God bless the United States. I, I hope we can get through this. It's, um, you know, I am a little nervous about it all. Just, and it's both sides. It's not, it's not one yeah. side or the other. It's every, people are, people are angry on um, both sides of the aisle. And, and I just hope that, um, you know, everybody can keep their cool no matter what happens. All right. Okay. Anyway, see you guys. I'm out. Thank you, Blake. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, Blake. You have a good one, buddy. You too. So D Day is amazing here. surprise that quantitative easing can fix social issues. Really? I thought it could fix everything. <laughs> almost everything. Almost. Well, speaking of that, um, and before we talk about the US, we had the RBA overnight. It cut rates from 0.25 to 0.1. I don't know what change that's going to make, but they did that. We and knew that the day would come, eh? that yeah, Australia they, would have zero rates they, in essence. They had said before that this is it. We're not cutting further from 0.25, but they cut a little bit further. They're going to do 100 more billion of QE, five to 10 years, really. I mean, yeah, more of the same. Um, so the main event today, as Blake said, the year selections. The question is, will there be a straight result or is it going to be a contested election? That's what the markets really want to know because at the end of the day, the... Um, like you said, Steve, very correctly, more of everything is going to come from either side. Oh, so, yeah. So stocks, sure. stocks are going up no matter what in the end. But how do we get there? If there is a contested election, I mean, Trump already tweeted, I think, yesterday, late yesterday, that um, he's going to contest the result or something like that. I didn't see the exact tweet, but I remember people talking about it. And it's like, uh, unless there is a big landslide win by Biden, then there's going to be some kind of uh, you know trouble. And so I'm still not convinced, um, like the markets are, that it's going to be a clean result and everything's going to be. There is also the possibility, Stelio, that if the result is quite clear, and especially with a lot of the mail votes pending, which everybody agrees that those are going to be more heavily, you know, skewed towards Biden. There is a chance that even if Trump says that he's going to contest it, the markets won't really care because if the markets think that the result is going to be, you know, more or less uncontestable, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. The market might not pay so much attention. Yeah, I, ju I just think there are so many scenarios where things could get a little bit tricky uh, compared to the nice... Oh, yeah, there are. Easy... There are, of course. Yeah, so, you know, markets seem to be very confident about the result today. I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, but, you know. We'll see soon enough. He's going to, uh, our president's going to declare victory tonight if there's any pathway um, on a let, because, you know, today is a day he's counting on, as Steve said, for, you know, uh, a big turnout for him today. So yeah. he's planning on having a victory party tonight in the White House. Yeah, and then as the mail in votes get counted and, uh, you know, Biden's percentage goes up, he's he might say, yeah. The yeah. usual stuff. Anyway, yeah. we'll, see. we'll see how it goes. Well, good thing is that one way or another, in the next few days, we will know. And um, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah, maybe. Um, otherwise, uh, there Hopefully. were a couple of. Sorry, go on. I, I, I've, I've I've said it before. I think the uh, the chances of a more clear result than the market uh, ex expects are a little bit higher. Uh, then I see most people believe, in my opinion. That, that's my intuition. And, okay. yeah. But, of course, you know, all that is speculation. In a few hours, we're, <laughs> we're going to know for sure. Yeah. Uh, apart from know. that, uh, we had a couple of uh, Brexit headlines that there is going to be some kind of announcement today in meetings, et cetera, et cetera. But really, who, who cares on this day about Brexit or anything else? Um, data, we had nothing and the usual COVID headlines you know things are still going not very well in the world and in Europe particularly things are going up so you know the same you know a bit more of the same but really all focused on the elections today and um, and see how the result goes and you know I'm, I'm going to repeat what I said yesterday I have very little uh, on I'm still short uh, now only a small position of Euro Norway I was taking profits as it was uh, dropping um, and uh, I am still short bunds and a little bit of treasuries via TBT 
Bunzer. And I'm trying on my own to drive silver down to your entry. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. trying. Much, I'm using the How cursor. much have you been selling in the market? <laughs> I, I, I don't want to talk about my size. <laughs> you know what I mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay we're gonna interview your uh, wife <laughs> <laughs> we're separated still so anyway uh yeah still i'm trying man <laughs> i right, think he's gonna I, get there it's gonna I get think, there the, the question yeah. is how he gets there that's you know that's yeah. the thing today as we get yeah. um news from from states individual states you know coming through there's gonna be a lot of noise and a lot of volatility that's for sure yeah. So, you know, position sizing for me is going to be small and I'm going to react to what I see. Uh, but uh, at the moment, I'm carrying very, very little. Yeah. Forex Gal says electoral college decides president, not popular vote. Electorals do not have to vote the way popular votes go. Remember this. Yes, nice. that is very true and historically accurate. And it used to be this way in the past. But and, you know, I'm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly asking. I, I, I was of the um, opinion. I don't know if I'm mistaken. You, Dale, that have boots on the ground, or and you know some of the US listeners might know better. Uh, has that actually been exercised? I mean, the ability of uh, electors to actually vote differently than the popular vote of their state has, has this a, actually has this actually my, happened in the recent past? Not in my lifetime. Yeah, but, okay, that, but, that's what but I thought it as well. Can. It, but she's right, it can. No, 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 I know it can, but yeah, I know but, that but, it's some, I, I was of the opinion that something that hasn't happened in, you know, many, many, many years, so, you yeah, know. like pandemics and everything else that's going on. <laughs> right? Yeah, you have a point there. <laughs> well, the, que the question becomes, if, uh, if, 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 you, if, if the, um, uh, vote did not follow what the people have voted for, then what's the point of having people vote, right? <laughs> they might as well just cast their own votes and uh, decide on their own. But um, yeah. I guess for, for a special, really special circumstances, they might do, but that's going to carry a lot of risk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because I, I'm assuming that if whatever state votes, the elec uh, electors uh, vote differently than the popular vote in the state, I'm assuming that's going to be the beginning of, you know, a lot of rioting and uprest oh, yeah. in the state. Yeah, it will yeah, be. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but they can do that. And uh, there's talk that that could happen, uh, especially in states where Republicans are the majority in the state assemblies. Okay. You know, every state has, a, you know, House of Representatives, too. So, yeah, you know. But, uh, Every state uh, has its own constitution as well. I mean, yeah. Uh, our yeah. friend Sansi is saying, you mean like how the EU referendums work? Just ignore the popular vote. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Very Say, good point. Yeah. There's a... <laughs> It's a <laughs> universal theme, yeah. <laughs> Screw the people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know something? At least when they do that, they're being honest. You, yeah. know, uh, you know what I mean? In yeah. any case... You know, they end up screwing the people. Uh, yeah. At least in this case, they don't hide that they're doing it. You know what I mean? No. no. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Anyhow, well, the uh, globally, the political now. situation is, you know, goes from bad to worse every decade. You know, things are just worse. I mean, just look at the, you know, global political leaders like in the 80s and compare them like to today or, you know, to a decade ago. And, you know, it's. It's a steady decline of quality. Yeah, the yuppie yep. generation are the leaders now. Baby boomers. Okay. So, whoa. Uh oh. What was that? Oh, my dogs. That's sorry, my dogs. Mike. <laughs> I'm muting. Mike or Millie? Or both? Probably uh, both. Both. Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. Okay, so um, I, I lost the first part because I was in a meeting having to do with popular effects pairs. Just one comment here. Look at the Aussie. The Aussie, it, it's, it's, it's probably my uh, preferred main effects pair at the moment because it's at a key juncture, as you can see. The recent correction has been just a consolidation within this triangle and we're running out of space. We're currently testing resistance and the Aussie looks like it wants to break higher. 
Um, I'm assuming it's going to wait for some signal from uh, the US. So if the US result is a risk positive, let's say we have uh, like uh, Trump winning or Biden winning, but you know, in a way that the market is going to feel that we're not going to have a lot of, uh, you know, issues in the weeks ahead. I, I think that the risk asset should move higher. And I do think that Aussie is the number one candidate uh, to break out from here and push higher towards 76 uh, cents. Keep in mind that as Stelios mentioned, the RBA did cut interest rates and the Aussie doesn't seem to care. Uh, albeit, to be fair, not that it makes much of a difference, you know, from cutting from 25 basis points to 10 basis points. But nevertheless, it was a rate cut and still the OZ is, you know, quite significantly higher um, on the day. So keep that in mind. Uh, having said that, don't forget that the Kiwi looks even more bullish. I mean, the Kiwi still produces a series of higher lows. You can clearly see it here, still trading within this channel. And unless we break down from this channel, there is a good chance that we're just going to accelerate to the upside. Breaking through 68 cents, I think it's going to be quite a bullish um, signal. Now, clearly, with all the risk on that's been going on since yesterday, the dollar is suffering. But in any case, that's, that doesn't come as a surprise. I've told you multiple times that I don't see anything bullish with the dollar, even ignoring completely the fundamental picture. I don't see technically anything bullish with the dollar. I don't see anything bullish with the dollar index, so on and so forth. Great call. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, my intuition, but that's not a trading advice. Anyhow, we're not giving trading advices here. What we do here is that we give our opinions using our experience, um, our ability, our knowledge, and you know those that you know agree or disagree, you can you know do whatever you want with your trading yeah. account. That we don't click that, mouses for anybody. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, but my intuition, as I've said before, is that the chances for a clean result that's going to definitely be in the short term risk positive are greater than the market prices in. That doesn't mean that's going to happen. I'm just saying that in comparison to what the market prices in, I think that the chances are better. So I'm not saying that I know what's going to happen because I don't. I just think that the market misprices a little bit the odds of having something conclusive today. That's, you know, the only thing that my comment means. Now, um, having said that, um, we've seen a very nice reaction uh, that started the day before yesterday. Um, we haven't produced a lower low. You can clearly see that this low here in the S&P is higher than that low yeah. in the S&P at 3210, which yeah. means that there is absolutely zero evidence so far that the S&P has broken down in any type of way, right? I mean, this yeah. can be a horizontal consolidation before exploding higher. So I would be very, very, very cautious with pushing... Um, short positions ahead of the elections here, uh, as long as that's the case. Now, breaking through 3210 um, definitely points, you know, to at least uh, some type of a deeper corrective move lower. Uh, keep in mind, though, that today is the day that can produce spikes that can be very easily and fast retraced. So, you know, today is not a day that you necessarily want to trust the initial reaction of the market. Also, keep in mind, I've gone through a lot of elections, and I'm not referring only to U.S. elections. I'm, I, I talk about globally. I mean, Greece, U.S., and not only whatever was relevant to the markets this time. Um, I can tell you as a fact that emotions can really shift during the night. So, you know, especially with the case of the U.S., you know, you might have like a, a state... Uh, turn one way or another, one of the swing states and, you know, the market getting enthusiastic that somebody now has, you know, a good lead and then get the next two swing states, you know, turning the other side and then the market completely, uh, you know, U-turns and starts pricing in um, more that the other person has, um, uh, you know, a higher probability of winning, so on and so forth, which means that, as I said before, you either, if you want to trade today, you either trade trade using low leverage, right? So you can actually 
um, uh, survive through potential violent swings, uh, or you don't trade at all, which is absolutely valid, right? Um, now, you know, the rest are up to you, really. I mean, I have nothing else to say. Now, so as far as requests, Steve, um, when I scroll back, uh, the usuals, um, natural gas, and someone ta uh, asking about bonds. So with the S&Ps doing what they're doing, maybe you could take a look at the bond and treasuries. Yeah, absolutely. We can have a, a look at the bonds because we haven't had a look at the bonds for right, quite some you know, time. Right. I can tell you the bonds are very, very clean from a technical perspective. We have this long-term descending channel after we topped, which, I mean, you be the judge. What kind of a formation you think that channel is? Like, it's clearly know. corrective. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've been in you know in a multi-year oh, okay. yeah. uptrend, right? Look at the right. previous long-term channel. Look what happened to it, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, despite thinking and and strongly believing that between the two bonds, um, you know, there is a better chance that the bonds uh, can actually more freely. Uh, move lower. Um, uh, I, you know, uh, uh, having said that, I don't see anything bearish. I mean, even within the context of this larger channel, um, we're trading within this ascending channel. So basically, support is at this channel trend line support, and the resistance is at the bigger channels trend line resistance. So resistance at 178, support currently at 174.50. Roughly anywhere in between, it's no man's land. I mean, nothing to do here. Just look at the last five days, five pin bars of insignificant range, yeah. one after the other. I mean, text dead. in dead, coma, dead, coma, yeah, coma comatose. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a comatose market. And I wouldn't want an EKG like that. Yeah, uh, nobody would. Yeah. And lo <laughs> and looking at the treasuries, you know, the picture isn't really different, right? I mean, yeah, they have been like slowly drifting lower, but look at this. I mean, this is not a normal market. I mean, with all that has been going on, this is not a bond market that you would expect to find, you know, and this is not an actual market, actually. I mean, people are not coming and, you know, buying and selling freely bonds here i mean this, this is i don't care what the fed says supposedly they haven't like um uh you know they they they, they haven't completely pegged this market but in essence they have so you know you want a support level here it's quite clear in my opinion it's here at 136 what is it this 70 roughly 136 70 and the resistance this trend line resistance para passes from like 140 20 so these are the two levels anywhere in between it's no man's land okay uh but you know i'm i mean i'm so um you know i'm so disappointed with these markets and uh, you know I, I don't believe in them anymore i i i mean if you think that the fed and the rest of the central banks aren't gonna let stock markets crash one time, uh, I can tell you that that applies multiple times for bonds. Because what's going to happen, Dale, you think, if the bond market collapses? To begin with, other than the obvious fiscal problems, stock markets will collapse as well. There is no chance that the bond market will collapse without the, the equivalent stock market not collapsing as well. So they're going to do anything they need to, you know, to keep them elevated. So keep that in mind. On the other hand, since there are no natural buyers at these levels and we, with the underlying problems, it's not easy to see these markets moving higher as well. So we know that there is a huge artificial support, but we know that there is no genuine buying interest. And I, I think that these two opposing forces are would have made, especially the treasury market, uh, being, you know, in a hypnosis, in essence. Um, anyhow, uh, 
the rest of the assets. Now, a decent reaction higher from silver, but it still doesn't tick the boxes for having found the low. That might have been the case, and as I've said multiple times, I have zero interest in trading any of the precious metals to the short side, zero interest. I only have interest to buy them at levels that I consider good. I have zero interest in selling them. So let me make that extremely clear. Now, you know, I would love to see silver down at 21. I've said that before. Can it happen? Yeah, it can. Uh, but I can tell you one thing, especially taking point from the, <clears throat> sorry, from the gold market, you know, I'm, <laughs> I would be really, really worried if I was short here. Ahead of the elections, gold is testing this trend line resistance and the um, consolidation since we found a high clearly points to a continuation higher sooner rather than later. So, you know, you see the gold market breaking out today and sustaining this. You don't want to be short any of the metals. I mean, I don't care if silver looks worse, which it does. It's going to follow higher. There's no question about it. So you want to be short the metals. You want to be short gold. Here is where you do it. But we break higher, you know, I think you're going to damage your account because, um, you know, you, you, you can see moves that you can't believe today uh, from gold and silver. I mean, uh, potentially, and depends on, uh, on the results, you can see massive, massive moves from the side of the metals. And in my opinion, the bigger type of move that can potentially happen today is to the upside and not to the downside. I don't mean that you can have a big move to the downside, but I believe that there are some you know, odd scenarios that will really uh, uh, make um, precious metals explode. So keep that in mind. Personally, I wouldn't go short uh, any of the medals ahead of the elections, no matter what. But, you know, as I said. Steve, we've had an... like one heck of a bounce in WTI from 33. We uh, did. Is, we is actually this did. A, yeah, and that was kind of a target a few people had. Uh, or do you yeah. think this is the rally to sell or that was it? I would be very, very skeptical. First of all, yesterday's candlestick is massive. Yeah. Uh, an outside uh, hammer with yeah. this massive lower wick yeah. uh, after actually um, achieving the quality target from the first leg lower to the right. second leg lower. I'm right. not convinced that it's over, but technically speaking, it has definitely fulfilled the minimum expectations. So having said that, also, now that I think about it, Dale... Let's let's also see. Yeah, you see. Yeah. So there is, you know, a very good likelihood. That was it. That that was it. Yes. Yes. There is a good likelihood that that was it. I guess we're going to find out tonight. Well, when the dollar is bad, everything else is good. True. Very true. Having to do with natural gas, nice continuation lower. But as I've said before, uh, 290, you know, key pivot area. And as long as 290 holds, the bulls are in control. As simple as that. A retest of 290, in my opinion, even higher levels, 305, is probably a good buying opportunity, if you ask me. Copper holding up also very nicely. Uh, palladium has broken through this ascending wedge, retesting it. Let's see what happens from here. Uh, this might not have even been a wedge. We'll, we will have to find out. Platinum holding up quite nicely. Uh, I think platinum above 940, it's gone. Uh, platinum above 940, I think we're going for a higher high above 1,040. Um, so I, I still believe that the dollar looks weak and that anything that's dollar denominated looks like it's well technically positioned to benefit. Uh, by the way, do we have a, a guest today ahead of the U.S. elections? Yeah. We have a great guest. Uh, we have Dana Lyons. 
Okay. J Lyons Fund Management. Uh, Dana's great. Have you seen, by the way, they use the Turkish lira? It's just non-stop pain. Still, yeah. I have to call my friend Omer. I must have saved this guy a lot of money. Uh, I convinced him at six that you know he should get his money, all his money, out of Turkey and into U.S. dollars and euros. Because there is no chance that the Turkish lira will turn lower. It took took a lot of persuading, but he actually did it. How about the ruble, real quick, Steve? What's yeah, that doing? absolutely. And then uh, Dana, I see you. We're going to get started here very shortly after this. Uh, reacted again from this trendline resistance. Um, you know, it still needs yeah. to do a lot more to convince me that, you know, it's moving to the downside. Uh, as we've said before, though. Like 80 to 50, key level yeah. for the bulls. If they take that out, uh, you know, we might see a massive squeeze, which I think is going to be an amazing opportunity. I, I, you know, I really hope for the uh, Russian ruble to, to get decimated uh, because I think it's, you know, the, the lower it goes, uh, the, the better opportunity it is. And I yeah. do think that it's a good long term opportunity. Well, it may be, it may not make new highs. It might so not, yeah. This, might uh, not. You know, this could be this could be it. So uh, we'll see. Uh, dollars turning bad. The, you know, uh, the ruble, unlike uh, the lira, uh, not making new highs for a long time. So, and yeah. since you wanted exotics, look at the uh, Chinese yuan still oh, yeah. Yeah. holding against the dollar within this channel. So the this king. channel still very relevant. The kings um, of the east. Yeah, yeah I, th I think we're going to see a very nice move once we get a definitive breakout. And to be fair, the pullback for the time being doesn't look impulsive, but sometimes, you know, a big move starts, you know, more silently, you know, more yeah. um, slowly, and then they just surprise you and they, they accelerate. Yeah, what's that expression? Markets bottom in silence and top in top violence. violence. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right. So I have uh, I've enjoy the interview set up. Uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Dale. Welcome back, Dana. What a great day to have you. How are you, Dana? Thank. You. All right, can you hear me now? Got you now, Dana. Got me. All right, cool. Ha happy uh, election great to be ha back. Yeah, happy election day. You want to share your screen? It's that green box, buddy. Yep, got you, got you. Um, all right, perfect. Uh, okay. Share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everyone, you know, uh, you know, I've interviewed Dana several times over the years, and uh, he's one of the more disciplined uh, RIAs I know. Um, you know, he might have some internal biases, but you know, he sticks with uh, price. And uh, really, Dana, the the question I have is, what was what's more important, the break we had last week, or the two day recovery we're having now. I think I, honestly, I think a lot, all of that is uh, near term noise. Um, a lot of okay. it uh, uh, has to do with the election uh, that if we, if we zoom out a little bit, um, you know, that we're not too bullish in the long term. We think uh, there's major trouble ahead um, to continue uh, not just a, uh, 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 some of the concerns that we have over the last decade, but even some of those excesses that we've talked about that were built up in the bull market top in 2000 that were not adequately worked out. We think there are a lot of uh, prices to be paid for that. However, in the, in the uh, what we call the intermediate term, that's about the uh, duration that we operate about two to six months typically, um, cause you can have some big moves in that, uh, time right. period. And if you're on the wrong side, guess what? My clients fire me. So I can't, I can't have, I can't uh, be uh, positioned for that long-term move if it's not happening right now. So right. Um, like you said, you have to remove your biases and, and, and uh, operate with what's happening now. And right now, uh, for uh, several reasons, we um, are fairly bullish. We've got the, uh, we're 
positioned fairly bullish or substantially bullish. And um, uh, so until proven otherwise, that's uh, that's what we're going with. That's why that's okay. with the data. That's where the data is leading us. OK, so this is an interesting index, uh, pure growth. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it looks like it just last week we just pulled back to a prior high and bouncing off it. Uh, uh, right. If we take out uh, the low, and it looks like yesterday's low, uh, would that change your picture for you? No, you got to have a, uh, uh, give it a little bit of leeway. So you asked me okay. what was more important the last two days or the uh, prior last, pullback. Yeah. I would say uh, a couple things happened. In, into uh, late August, early September, we started getting seeing a, a thinning out of the rally. We started seeing less and less participation. We pulled our horns in a little bit. And uh, uh, throughout uh, September, we saw our model, our risk model weakening and almost turning to a, a, cell, a cell signal for the first time since April. Uh, funny thing happened in early October, we saw a major bounce back in the market internals, uh, a, real, a nice uh, recovery, rejuvenation in the uh, press uh, statistics saw a number of new areas in the market break out and actually uh, join in the rally. So we saw a broadening of participation and included in that was uh, uh, where some things like this, uh, the mid cap pure growth index is the S&P 400 pure growth index. So we saw a breakout above, like you mentioned, highs from 2018 as well as earlier this year. And what we've seen in the last uh, half a month is a pullback towards that breakout area. And also um, <clears throat> mirroring that is the, the Russell 2000 small cap growth index. So you can see another breakout in early oh, yeah. October above those highs over the last few years, pulling yeah. back that we've seen a lot of nervousness over the last couple of weeks. What if this is just a pullback towards that breakout level and uh, that will provide, you know, once we get through the selection, this could provide a nice springboard for another rally, another leg up to all time highs here. So that, that is, looks um, that looks uh, uh, like a two drive, which is incomplete, which to me would mean that there's one more high coming. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a, yeah, that's an interesting look. And uh, doesn't Russell tend to do better, Dana? When the dollar is strong, um, do you pay you know pay attention to that correlation? I've heard people talk about it on a relative um, basis, yeah. Um, but we honestly we don't uh, pay too much attention to that because those, okay. those those types of um, relationships, you know, as you know, yeah, they, they come and go. Yes, exactly. And you can't yeah. marry yourself to it if it's not working out. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll we'll what what we do we have a, uh, a broader you know, top-down approach, a uh, market-wide approach. But when it comes to investment selection, we'll zero in on, on each ticker on each market and judge that on its own merits. And, so uh, where do you think uh, most of the money is going? Probably what you're showing me now from the underperformance of Amazon and Microsoft, the Fang and MAGA names, which even on days when the market is strong seem to be lagging. Uh, mm -hmm. People taking chips off the table because they're worried about higher tax capital gains taxes and moving into value, to um, or you cyclicals. Know, it, uh, you know, it 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 could be, but again, uh, we don't really care why things are happening, only what. So um, yeah. um, we've had uh, we've had. You know, some of the same uh, relative strength leaders were about we're all about concentrating our, our portfolios and whatever is working. Uh, so we've had a lot of the same things leading for a while. Technology, healthcare, care, um, yeah. that type of thing that, as you mentioned, have been lagging a little bit of late. So you look at um, you look at uh, uh, stuff like uh, software. But if you scroll out a little bit, you know, we had a nice rally right up to uh, some of the Fibonacci extension levels. Now we're just consolidating. Uh, the good thing is we can hold on to this stuff uh, for a uh, resumption of the rally while uh, other things uh, starting to emerge, uh, new relative strength leaders like materials maybe, which rallied back, uh, broke out to new highs, consolidating right now, maybe uh, putting in a um, uh, storing up fuel for the next leg higher in the rally uh things like um 
uh, the internet, uh, the Chinese internet. You look at yeah. uh, something like the uh, CQQQ, which has continued to make new highs. And uh, I mean, there, there, there's not much, there are many charts better than this one. So uh, yeah. you, you see a rotation like you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not necessarily a thing. We don't see necessarily uh, technology and healthcare and those types of things falling by the wayside. They're, they're pretty much um, uh, consolidating constructively in our view, even as other, um, other um, uh, uh, sectors, other market segments are joining the party. So I think, you know, from that standpoint, you have a very um, constructive environment of um, uh, a number of uh, good targets, a number of high relative strength um, type of uh, targets. And even something like the gold miners, which had a great run, you know, we're having a uh, pullback, um, which is not um, unhealthy after a, a run right. that we had, uh, right. even going to, if I go to the XAU, you can see it uh, even more clearly. We had a great run right up to that 61 retracement, you know, from the 2011 yeah. top not unhealthy to pull back from here or consolidate like it like it's doing and store some energy for the next leg higher potentially so um it's been a very good trading environment you had some leaders um off of that uh, march low that led the way uh now you have a broadening um array of participants which is uh which makes for a good uh a good trading a good environment best environment how about how about the two most unloved uh sectors uh which i think would be uh energy and banks uh yields yeah. have ticked up and that's helped the banks and and actually yesterday uh oil made a pretty important held in a pretty important level and spiked higher um i don't hear anyone saying that they want to roll into energy here yeah uh energy um goes against our uh, relative strength philosophy. So we're not about bottom pickers, okay. but we did. Right. We did. Yeah. Now, there will be times when it gets so bad that we'll, okay, go for a mean reversion bounce. We right. did that in energy, XLE. As you can see, um, uh, pulled back. We had that initial low in early October, uh, came yeah. back down, tested, undercut it, and then recovered that 78 retracement here on yeah. the XLE. So. We did, uh, we bought it back here, got a little bounce. Uh, we're almost stopped out except uh, that uh, immediate recovery. So this looks good for uh, for a continuation of the near-term bounce. The first, um, first area we'd look at um, on the XLE certainly would be that about that 3160-ish level. If we get above there, then we can start rallying more um, uh, in, uh, more earnestly from there. Uh, but this would be a, a mean reversion. Um, type of a trade for us okay. and uh, I, I would say not our cup of tea but does have uh, further potential uh, financials we've been short this one off and on for a long time uh, trading it uh, it's worked out well for us as a hedge right now um, XLF uh, doesn't look bad all, no we trade all um, all ETF so um, yeah. I don't look at the uh, commodities uh, too much um, but uh, XLF Running right into resistance here at 2460. Uh, we are not short this anymore, uh, partly because of the rising interest rates. We're short bonds and we think uh, rates go higher, which uh, should presumably help financials. If we get above uh, 2460 uh, decisively, then uh, 26 is the line in the sand. Obviously, that's 61 retracement from the uh, February top. It's about where we stopped out the last few times. Uh, if we get decisively above there, then, you know, yeah. we could uh, see a nice rally in the banks and financial. I would not. It's not again. This one's not our cup of tea from the long side, but I would not be wanting to short this one, especially if rates uh, continue higher, which we think they do. How do you express a short bond position? In futures and uh, TBT, TLT, TBT, huh? we are we are okay. uh, we're short. The, we're long the TBT, which is short the long bond. Right. Um, right. I, I, I we will be tempted to short the ten year probably today. Uh, if, uh, if I pull up a chart of the uh, ten year yield, um, we've got um, uh, we're still uh, we're still testing the recent high around uh, yeah. we'll call it uh, eighty five basis points, but. 
uh, uh, sneakily were back above 200 that 200 day. day. Yes. Yeah, and now yeah. use that uh, maybe the 82, um, 81, 82 basis points as support. The next uh, shot higher, the next uh, upside would be about 95 basis points. We could get there real quick. And uh, eventually we, we've been looking for about 107, 108 on the upside in the uh, tenure. I know. I think we talked about it last time uh, when yeah. I was on, and we've been in uh, agreement about uh, the, the prospects for higher rates uh, in the tenure and the third year. Looking for about, uh, I think it's about 185 would be um, uh, the next upside target there. So uh, I, I I would concur with the uh, prospects for upside uh, upside targets. Are, are, are How about the uh, prospects for a contested election, and we don't have a result for? weeks what well, do you think not, <laughs> i <laughs> i don't have an edge in that uh yeah, yeah. In, in terms of that analysis uh, obviously like what is your edge uh, i, I mean edge, I, go ahead our what our is, edge our edge is, is is following objective um quantitative market data you know we've okay. learned over the over the years we've We've developed these models, quantitative models, over many decades, and we've learned that okay, the, the market data, the the, the um, quantitative objective data is much smarter than we are because we're going to be still uh, subject to human nature, which which affects everybody, and really that's our other edge: the the, the fact that people are subjected to human nature and are going to make in herds are going to make the wrong move at the wrong time. And that, that gives us an edge if we follow the objective data. So we have a, a systematic process um, that allows us to, uh, you know, look at it cut and dry, black and white, uh, what, we, what we should be doing as, as opposed to being subjected to the whims of um, uh, headlines and uh, human nature and that type of thing. So yeah, as far as the election good. goes. Yeah, go ahead, Dana. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to forecast what's going to happen. I, I, it, we don't have an edge as far as, A, what's going to happen. More importantly, what the market's going to do in reaction to that. So uh, fortunately, the, the market's uh, probably the, the greatest discounting mechanism in the history of the world. And that's going to spit out uh, whatever uh, uh, the data it spits out is what we're going to have to follow. And to the, to the extent that you know, the election or any other event um, is going to uh, impact the market in a meaningful way. That's going to be reflected in the market data. So we're going to continue to follow that and, uh, uh, again, not try to forecast what's going to happen or guess how the market's going to react as a result of it. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not looking for uh, a repeat of March with this uh a uh, new wave of COVID that's, you know, causing lockdowns in Europe. And, you right. know, we were about a month behind uh, Europe uh, when it comes to uh, lockdowns. But uh, isn't there a possibility that uh, even though stimulus is coming, that we could have a period with COVID getting worse over the winter? Um, I actually think if we take out this week's lows and uh, last week's lows in S and P's, we could trade down to about twenty nine hundred, and then resume the bull market. Uh, you know, I am a discretionary, subjective guy, technical guy, and uh, I'm thinking that uh, we have one more break left. Um, you have levels. Yeah, okay, so you have the fifty percent level there. <clears throat> yeah. So. And the gap I, I, too, you know, I mean, look yeah. at the, yeah. I, I would say that, yeah, I would say there's uh, certainly anything can happen if uh, there's a possibility. Doesn't it look like Wiley Coyote standing on the ledge? <laughs> a little Nobody? bit, so, yeah, yeah. If we break <laughs> out, right. and, and if we break those levels and certainly uh, if we get, especially if we have a contested election, it looks like it's going to drag out. Uh, yeah. I don't see, I mean, we'll look back and, um, 2016, you know, you remember the overnight uh, breakdown yeah, we had. I do, yeah, uh, limit down. Reversed. Yeah. Carl um, Icahn left the party yeah, and bought exactly. a billion dollars worth of futures. Exactly, that exactly. Yeah. That, that could happen. Um, and uh, you could see prices moving quickly. I would say, um, as far as the S&P 500, we've said this a lot, the, 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 the more eyes, the more watched uh, uh, index or a ticker is 
the more it's subjected to gains and uh, gamesmanship and the, the more false signals it gets. So if we see, uh, if we see lower lows, it doesn't bother me that much. Like the S and P, if we break down, actually that would run a lot of stops and it would probably yeah. be more healthy than maybe just sitting here on the ledge for a while. Um, yeah. that would make me more nervous sitting here for a while, as opposed to a swift break, maybe test the 200 a day or even break that and uh, test that 38 retracement, uh, around 30, 50, uh, yeah. and then reverse. So, but, um, yeah, for now, okay. uh, 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 we're not long the S and P 500. We've got a, a lot of other sectors that we like better so, like that, you know, like the, the, the small cap and the mid cap growth indices that I showed at the beginning. Now, is there a chance that those are false breakouts and we, and, and we fail? Yeah. But we'll respond to that. Uh, if that happens, I would uh, say, how, how about the cannabis? Uh, do you like cannabis? <laughs> Dana, <laughs> I, I, I do not dabble in the cannabis, nor do we dabble in the uh, uh, cannabis stock. All no right, doesn't either way. Um, all we right, do, we will. You know, we go wherever the data leads us, and that includes relative strength sectors. If it's uh, showing up on our scans as a leader, yeah. then we'll go there. Um, once we have enough data to track that, because we are, again we're in ETFs, we don't pick single stocks. So once we have enough data to judge those types of things, um, like the new fads and whatnot, then we'll, we're happy to go there. If it shows up on our, on our scans, we don't. How about, um, are out. you guys starting to monitor? There is a crypto ETF GBTC. Are you guys looking at any of the crypto yeah, space? But, yeah, we've been, uh, I've been watching Bitcoin for, uh, we have not invested in it at all, uh, but we've been watching uh, Bitcoin. Because, you know, for, what I noticed uh, last week, Dana, when everything was under pressure, yeah. the relative strength was uh, crypto. So, yeah. You know, uh, other agree. times, other times when uh, we've had, you know, uh, precious metal weakness and stock yeah. weakness, uh, crypto yeah. succumbed and yeah. it really held up well till yesterday. I thought it was interesting as well. Um, and uh, I think the key move was back here in, uh, I think it was July, broke that yeah. downtrend from the from the top, consolidated, and then uh, rallied uh, over the last week. That we're seeing, I think we, we stopped in the upper 13,000s for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the highs in uh, 2019, yeah. but that's also the 61 retracement from the top. So... Um, I think uh, it's going to have some work to do to get through this. So I, I love uh, that line because actually before I saw your chart, I thought that if there was a bull market correction, we could pull back to around 9,000 and that would test the breakout. Yep. Yep. I would say right line. now you've got, uh, if you're a bull, I, I yeah. would be, if I'm, if I'm conservative, I'd be waiting for maybe a test down around 11,000. Five to seven hundred before uh, put more uh, put more allocation towards it. But I would say, yeah, it's definitely in in a uh, bull market right now. Uh, it's got some challenges though, right here in the uh, yeah. 13,000, 14,000 range uh, before it gets going again in uh, in earnest. So it's got some challenges, but yeah, in the near term, certainly the benefit of the doubts to the upside. Uh, I would not be chasing it here though. Okay, so uh, uh, I don't know if you showed TBT. I'm curious as to your levels because uh, I own it too from the 15 range. And one, I was looking for about 18. I'm wondering what you're thinking there. And um, then I want, yeah, uh, I'll go, go ahead. And I wanted to ask you, uh, what is a minimum account that you accept? What's uh, what are your standards for? taking on equity in your sure in our in our registered investment advisory our minimum is a hundred thousand um okay you know if uh if part of that used to stem from the fact that we had custody and administrative fees uh now that custod custodians are are doing away with a lot of those fees those fees don't have a, a material impact on the smaller accounts so we're open um if 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 folks are close we're open to you know working with them um okay. we also have subscription sites now including the lion share which we started oh. a couple of years ago which um 
right basically it's a it's a subscription site it, it provides an all access look at at our our process pretty much we put out um, i put out a um, video every morning about uh, our short long term uh, outlook for stocks and we cover basically all the important or pertinent uh, charts um, in all the markets and uh, basically what we're looking to buy, sell, and short. So it really is like an all-access look at what what uh, how our uh, how we're viewing our investment process and uh, it's basically okay. for do-it-yourselfers. They got to uh, make the moves themselves, but it gives them a good look at uh, what we're looking at. So okay, so after TBT, maybe you could. Uh show that site and absolutely so people that are watching it now or see the video later know how to find you absolutely so tbt um, here's tbt obviously got uh resistance at that uh, yeah. recent highs and around that uh, falling 200 day i i don't like to uh chart a i don't like charting leverage products i don't like charting uh, inverse products because they're they're, they're kind of derivatives of other right things so uh i would i would focus on the 30 year and uh focus um okay so you support yeah. resistance in the third great year point yield so yeah because uh, you have the expenses and some type of decay on all of these exactly inverse products exactly yeah. you have the daily rebalancing and everything so yeah uh i would say right now support on the 30 year is a, a around 150 yeah um so i'd be shorting it there uh, to the upside, we're challenging resistance right now around 164, 165 right here today. Uh, decisive breakthrough there. And like I said, the next level we're looking for and what we've been looking for is about 184 to the upside. Okay. And okay. Uh, we would uh, definitely look to uh, cover some shorts at that point. Okay, great content again, Dana. Uh, you want to show your site, uh, your newsletter subscription absolutely. site absolutely. and uh people keep in mind that uh you know if you don't have time to manage your ira or your retirement account account that uh talk to dana okay here this is uh the, the lion share that all access uh service we're talking you're gonna about. have to lion do a share. new share you'll have to do oh. a new share because okay. i'm i'm so new share. my bad yeah it's okay I'm, uh, I'm a rookie at this stuff. That's all right. I'm just trying to put a good commercial together for you. Buddy. I appreciate right. it. So the Lionshare Pro, LionsharePro.com is our Lionshare uh, subscription site. Again, it's an all-access uh, site, and uh, if, if folks are interested, we we recently did a uh, every year we do a annual crash sale around the uh, anniversary of the '87 crash. So we offer 22.6 percent off, like the Dow was that one day so if, if your <laughs> listeners are interested i'm happy to extend that it's expired but i'm happy to extend that further but um, okay our um registered investment advisory is called j lions fund management incorporated jlfmi.com we also have a 401k uh subscription service for uh, uh 401k investors called my 401k pro.com it's basically a a monthly um updated service that but it provides some of the risk managed um tools for 401k investors who don't have access to uh, tools like that when to get defensive when to get uh, aggressive and more when what yeah what specific funds in their plan are um are, are most suitable for investing and uh, we we again we update that on a monthly basis actually we update it today so uh that's another product that uh we do offer Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much, Dana, for taking time out of uh, the election day. And, um, you know, uh, are you worried about uh, the aftermath of this at all outside of the market uh, from a market perspective? Um, what do you think? Uh, I mean, you know, kind of like a couple crises happening at the same time, uh, you know, another wave in COVID with a contested election. Um, I hope that you and your family remain safe um and i'm i'm hoping that our better angels in america um take charge because i'm concerned that they're you know they're taking a yep. break right now right well i'm i'm right there with you dale um you know there's always a lot to be worried about but i think uh there's a higher higher power uh in charge of it all that uh 
I think we look yeah. to. I think you and I are uh, yeah. on the same wavelength there. That um, uh, that uh, is always a great comfort when uh, you have all those uh, concerns. Yeah, and, yeah, and worries, yeah. Which, and I'll tell you, there something. always will be. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Dana? And don't tell me that worrying doesn't work, because almost everything I worry about doesn't happen. Yeah, that's right. All right. So that's uh, right. Uh, you and your family uh, have have a great holiday season despite everything that's going on. And Dana, I really appreciate you being a contributor and edifying our community here in FACE. Let's get together next year and see what's happening. Always a pleasure, Dale. Thank you. I always uh, really appreciate you inviting me on. It's always a fun, uh, fun time. You have a great yeah. show. I, I enjoy talking to you, Dana. So my trading warrior brother, Dana Lyons, take a screenshot here, guys. And I'm sure there's something that would be a great resource for you. And that's going to be a wrap for Turnaround Tuesday. Um, good luck tonight. Uh, trade with, uh, it's okay not to trade. A lot of people don't know that. It's okay to do nothing. That's a position too. Don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. Hold your families close. And we'll see everyone uh, tomorrow and see what kind of world we wake up to. So you're very welcome. People are thanking you, uh, Dana, for your presentation. And adios, everyone. I'll see everyone tomorrow. Adi I'll see you. You're very welcome, everyone.